Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You good? I am, yeah. Good. A bit cold outside, but... Yeah. I spend most of the time outside. <sighs> uh, Arna, last night Jude Bellingham said you're the best performing team in Europe. So where do you rank your side when it comes to the best in Europe at the moment? Yeah, if he talks about results uh, in the Champions League, so if you are number one in the Champions League in the league table, <clears throat> then um, it's true that when it comes to results, we have been in the last five games the best performing team. But I said it yesterday night already, um, the best team in Europe is still Real Madrid because they won uh, the Champions League last season. And the one that's going to win it this season can say... Uh, they are it. They are the one that's done. But at this moment of time, it's only five games in for us. We did touch on it last night as well. Obviously, the injuries to Connor and Ibrahima. Is there any update as to where they're at as regards those injuries? <clears throat> well, they're still being assessed, so it's difficult to see where they are. Yeah, I, I know where they are, but where they are in terms <laughs> of the injury. Um, so let's uh, let's wait and see. But uh, it's never a good sign if players. Uh, Connor, I had to take him off and uh, Ibu didn't walk off the pitch as he should after such a fantastic game that he played. He should have uh, made a round um, and clapped to the fans, but unfortunately he couldn't. So that's not a good sign. Obviously, you're eight points clear at the minute. Manchester City appear vulnerable given the run of form that they're on. You could go 11 points clear. At the same time, obviously, the gap could narrow to five points. So... How significant, how defining a moment could this potentially be in the title race for you? Uh, I think in general, if you play one of your competitors, it's always an important moment that has not so much to do with the amount of points they have or we have. Uh, these teams have always been in the last few years very close to each other, so those games are always very important, uh, just like the ones against Arsenal, just like the ones against Chelsea. But those ones are only important if you win against all the other teams. So that makes it that almost every game is very important to win uh, for them, but also for us. Just to check, Arna, then, with um, Kanate and, and Conor Bradley, uh, are you ruling them out of this game or do you think they've got a chance? No, I just said they're still being assessed and uh, it's so close after the game yesterday night and I just came off the training, uh, training pitch, so I can't tell you exactly where they are. Um, so we have, we have to wait and see um, where they are this weekend and um, and after that. Would Trent be fit enough to start, do you think? Yes, he would. Yeah. In terms of City as well, obviously Vinny mentioned um, about the run of form that they're on. Do you think that makes your job easier or harder for this particular fixture? No, I don't think anyone uh, in the last eight or nine years or maybe even longer would have said that City at home or away the word easy never comes up to my mind if I think about City. And, uh, easier. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, still, they're easy inside, easier. Okay. So, uh, uh, no, not at all. Uh, and and I, I know everybody's looking at their results and um, I've seen them as well. But if you face them, and that's what we do, you analyze it. And then I've seen, so for example, against Brighton, they were 1-0 up, could have scored 2 or 3-0, didn't. And then got beaten 2 1 against um, um, Tottenham. They could have been, after 20 minutes, two or three goals up, uh, weren't. And against Feyenoord, that, that has, has not happened many times. They were 3 0 up, completely dominated the game, and then uh, all of a sudden, in the end, it was 3 3. So they are still a very, very, very good team. And uh, one of the reasons why I think Pep Guardiola is the best uh, manager in the world, or one of the best managers in the world, I think the best though, uh, is that he always comes up with solutions for his problems. So, um, um, and his problem now might be that Rodri is out. But we all know, at least I think, I'm, uh, that he will come up with a problem that their run of form will bam, go again. Hopefully after Sunday. Thank you. Hi, Hannah. It uh, looked last night like the players were pretty pumped by the atmosphere in the first half and that came along with three yellow cards. And there was a moment actually where Curtis Jones signalled to his teammates to maybe keep their heads. Is that something that you are focusing on ahead of this game and what could be a similarly quite intense and, and good atmosphere that you need to sort of try and get your players to, to watch out for those yellow cards and things like that? 
Oh, especially if you have a yellow, you have to watch out for the next one. But I think one of the three was was Ryan Ravenberg who made this only a simple tackle or not for a yellow. But then he did this. Now the referees are quite keen on that, giving a yellow for that. So. Um, and the first two fouls we made, he also gave a yellow. Um, I think these games, you have to be on top of your game in every aspect. So you have to play fair and good duels. And sometimes that can lead to a yellow card. But you, then if you have received one, you have to be smart. And that's what I saw with Ryan. That's what I saw with, um, with Darwin as well. Because the one Darwin conceded was also in the set piece. And they were just struggling a bit. And the referee found it necessary to give yellow cards. So uh, we have to be uh, on top of our game. We have to be aggressive, but always in a good way. But maybe Curtis, what maybe Curtis meant, I don't know. We have to ask him is not only without without the ball, but also with the ball, be a bit more calm and and, and um, use your head a bit more, because that's what we did the second half even better than the first half, which led to two goals. I know we've spoken about injuries, and in previous games, I know it's been brought up with you about injuries of the opposition and players that they might be missing. Do you feel that your injuries have been a bit underplayed so far this season, given that you seem to have overcome them very well? Uh, I think in general people only talk about injuries if if the results are not there. So it's a good thing that nobody talked about our injuries. That means that we got our results in. But um, the moment you start to lose, it's about uh, kick-off time on a Saturday afternoon or it's about injuries or we always come up with certain ideas why uh, especially me, why we didn't win. But nine or ten times, it's about the quality of the players from the other team or their game plan. But we do have some very important players for us being injured. But if the replacements do so well, it's normal that that people don't talk about it that much. Um, but but yeah, it is true um, that missing Allison, which has been a starter for this club and been so important for this club so long. Missing Joko Jota, missing Trent in the last uh, two games. Those are players that have have had impact a lot on the results in recent years. But it's a good thing that we don't talk about. I think. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask. Obviously, you, you said that you want to restore Allison once he's fit again. Mm. What's Kelleher's future at this club, given how he's performed? Are you confident that he will be happy to revert to being number two, or do you expect him to want to move on? I'm expecting every player that he uh, want wants to be the number one so not only in the goalkeeper position in every position and it's always up to the player if he can accept his role uh, but for, at this moment uh, Cueve has accepted his role from the start of the season till now in a great manner um, when he didn't play but also when he did play so um, it's far too early to talk about what can happen next season I'm, I want every player uh, that they want to play every game would be completely wrong if he would have come over to me and said oh, I like it that I'm on the bench today so um, that's that's completely normal with him and all the others And um, but then it's always about the attitude if you don't play and that has been outstanding for example from Lucio and Maca last Sunday when they weren't selected in the first 11 and then they come in really strong yesterday I saw the same again with uh, with Dominic uh, Soboslai and uh, Cody Kakpo so um, they, they should uh, have the eagerness to play but if they don't they have to act in a normal way and that's what they all do at the moment Hi Arne um, one of the hallmarks of Man City's current run is that they could be conceding goals late in games I think it's six goals in the last 15 minutes across the last three games and that's something that Liverpool haven't done all season so what are your team doing so well to avoid that eventuality? Not playing Tottenham yet <laughs> 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 because they're a very good team as well Great playing style. No, um, it, 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 it always depends on the circumstances. And uh, them conceding free against the Feyenoord probably had a lot to do with, with the substitutions they made. Uh, and being extremely unlucky. So if you saw the first goal and the second goal, the second goal, the goalkeeper hit the ball towards the post and then it fell to Santiago Jimenez. Um, so during a season these things can happen to every team that's the same with injuries and uh, we've seen this at Arsenal with Odegaard being out that, that didn't help them with Rodri being out it didn't help City so I'm hoping we are not facing those same problems but if it does then we have to make sure it doesn't hurt us that much but it's always difficult for every manager everywhere around the world if one of your star players is injured 
And uh, yeah, when it comes to goals conceded, it is um, it's always also the circumstances though. So being two nil down and then maybe taking a lot of risk and then conceding is different than being one nil up and uh, trying to keep a clean sheet. That's what for breakouts. That's all, mate. On it, Man City have been struggling in recent weeks in the leaking goals. Do you expect to change the Guardiola system to combat the loss of defensive players like Rodri? Uh, that's what I just said. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes up with another brilliant idea. So I think he was the one who started playing the inverted winger, the, uh, uh, fullback. Then he was the one that started to play the centre back as a number six. So I don't think it's a surprise for anyone if he again comes something we're up with something no one has ever thought about before to make his team even stronger. And that's probably one of the reasons why he inspired so many managers around the world with all these. When he came up with it, we all thought it was crazy. Then he did it. And then we all thought, OK, let's try to do the same because it's a brilliant idea. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes up with, with something new again. Um, um, but yeah, uh, let's wait and see because many things have been done in football now. But um, yeah. He is, if there's anyone in this uh, managerial world that can come up with something new, it's definitely him. Thanks, Anna.